Hello, and welcome to Route Louse Gaming. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a rotating turret that tracks the player and fires on a tick. Um, so let me just give you a preview here. So it's going to have a collision around it, which you can adjust bigger and smaller. Um, you can see it drawing right there, the red collision here. When I enter, it'll track my movements and follow. It'll fire, I think I have it set for every two seconds right now. It'll fire the projectile from the first person blueprint. Uh, if you're not using the first person blueprint, you can either make your own projectile or import it from another project. Um, I'm not going to go over on how to make the projectile. All right, so get started. So we're going to start with a new blueprint actor. Go to blueprint class, actor. We will call this uh, turret. I'm going to call it turret 2BP because it's the second one I'm making. Cool. So we're going to open that up. Drag that down here. All right. So let's save that. Now, in the center of our scene, we want to get rid of this circle. So let's go to our components and type in scene. Grab that in there. Replace the, uh, the scene component they had there with this. So just click and drag it in. And that automatically gets rid of that circle there because we, we don't need it. All right, so there's a few things we need to make the turret. Um, I don't have a static mesh, so we're just going to use some primitive shapes in here that they give us. Uh, first, I use a cube, and I'm just going to call this the base. So that's that. Uh, we're going to go to a front view. And we're just going to drag this up on the Z axis. So that it's on the floor so it should just be uh, fairly even to the x-axis this red line here go ahead and I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect just close enough uh, then we can go back to perspective view next we are going to add a cube another cube or actually um, we'll go with a cone Gonna drag that cone up so it's protruding from the top of the base cube. And this is going to be basically the the swivel of our turret. So if we had like a call this a, a the swivel L or L E or the E L swivel. Let's we'll go with that. Um, we're going to basically just duplicate. This square and we'll call this the uh, barrel head so we're gonna drag the we just want to drag that one up on the Z and we're gonna scale this one down uh, this is basically what's going to be rotating this is the this is the shape that's going to track the players movements so we want it to be uh, much smaller and then we're going to do one more thing, which is add a cylinder for the barrel. Drop a cylinder in there. We'll bring it up here. Rotate it 90 degrees. On the X or Y, it really doesn't matter because um, we're going to have to do some modifying based on the, the direction that this, the, the barrel head is facing. Being we, we can't modify its... Um, it's a rotating component or the, uh, what do you call that? The pivot point on it, unless you import your own 3D mesh. Uh, Cause then inside of something like 3ds Max or, or Blender, you can specify where the pivot component is going to be. Um, on these primitive shapes inside Unreal, we don't have control over that in here. So we're gonna have to do some trial and error to figure out exactly which way it's facing. Uh, so that's going to be the barrel. I'll make it a little bit thinner on this. There we go. And then make sure you take the barrel. Well, let's rename it. Uh, the barrel. Uh, this needs to be a child component of the head because whenever this head moves, we want the barrel to move with it and keep its relative location. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag the barrel, click and drag it, and drop it on the barrel head. And you'll see that the barrel indents just a little bit. That shows that it is now a child of barrel head. So whenever we move head, the barrel's gonna come with it. So if I hit Control Z, go 
So what's going to happen is if it rotates, the barrel stays in the same exact relative position because it is a child of it. Okay, sorry about that. I had a, the engine crashed on me. I had to rebuild my geometry here. Didn't save it. Um, so we're picking up from the barrel here. The barrel needs to be a child of the cube. So we'll drop that. Um, and I think we named this, this was barrel head, right? And this is going to be the cylinder itself is then the barrel. Um, cone, this is going to be our swivel. Uh, let's compile and save that there so that way I don't lose anything and you don't lose anything in case it crashes. Um, all right, so we're adding the sphere collision. We're going to call this the collision. And I am just going to attach this to the swivel. Um, but it doesn't need to. I guess it could be attach it to the base. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Fine, too. Um, so it's really tiny. We're going to blow this up a bit. So basically, this is. Um, determining the range of which the player enters or exits the range of the turret. Um, so depending if you want it to be a short range or long range turret, up to you. I'm gonna go about there just for testing purposes. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to go, make sure you have it selected on the in your details panel. You'll have in rendering hidden in game. I'm gonna uncheck that. This way I can see the bounds of my collision while play testing it. Um, okay, so one more thing for this also is I like to add in an arrow component for, um, for debugging purposes. So we're just going to add an arrow and attach it to the end of the barrel. And then I'm going to move the arrow up and out to the tip of the barrel. We're actually, we're going to use this for a spawn point of our projectile as well. So make sure it's pointing. It's just outside. There should be like a little space there. Um, and it's pointing in the direction that you want your projectiles to move. All right, so it should look something like that. We're going to compile and save that. And then we get to actually start scripting. All right, so we're going to go into our event graph. And delete all of this stuff in here for now. Um, save, compile. And now the first thing we want is our overlap. So we're going to go to our collision and we're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to use our on component begin overlap. And what this is saying is when, um, when this overlap, when something goes over this circle around our turret, when something comes in range of it, uh, we're going to Cast to player, or actually it depends on which template you're using. If you're using the first person template like me, it's going to be first person. So first person character. So what this is doing, this is just a check. So it's when something is overlapping our collision, it's checking if it is the first person character. If it is the first person character, it'll continue doing whatever is attached. If it's not, then it's not going to do anything. All right. From here, we're going to get a gate. Uh, we don't want to enter the gate with this. We want to open the gate. And then when it enters, this is going to be an event tick. And before we move on from the gate, we're not going to do anything with it yet. Let's uh, finish our overlap stuff. So let's go back to the collision and let's get on component end overlap. We're gonna add that in there just like that. Um, I like to do a cast to the player to make sure that it's the player character that's ending the overlap. So just like that. And when you end overlap, it's gonna close this gate, meaning that nothing's gonna get through. Um, so when the player enters the collision area, it's gonna open this gate, allowing this tick to go through. And it's going to, on tick, meaning every frame, it's going to call whatever follows after this gate. So let's grab the barrel head. I'm going to pull that in here. 
and we are going to drag off get world rotation. Right? Cool. Now we're going to need something from this first person character because we want the barrel head to follow the first person character. So we're going to pull from this character itself. Um, the one that's overlapping. It's going to get the overlapping character and we're going to get the mesh. So it's going to follow the mesh of whatever's overlapping it. And with the mesh, we're also going to, we're going to uh, get world location. And we need one more thing from the barrel head, which is also world location. What we're going to do with these is there's this awesome node that does all this math for us is we're going to drag off the barrel heads get world location and we're going to use find look at rotation so this is doing a mathematical equation that pretty much gets the world location of the barrel head and gets the world location of the mesh and it pretty much draws a line from point a to point b and it figures out whatever the rotation that may be so no matter where the barrel head is point a is like if it was here wherever this mesh is world location it's going to draw a line and use that as a rotation and we're getting that value and so now we're going to use the get world rotation of the head and we are going to use an interp or an interpolation but it's going to be an r interp r for rotation so a rotation interp two so what we're doing here is um, we're getting the barrel head's current rotation, so wherever it's facing, and then we're getting the look at value or the look at rotation of the mesh and the head location, barrel head location. And it's going to lerp to that, meaning it's going to, going to um, move from one to the other. Now we need to make sure to set the delta time. We want a one-to-one -one ratio on delta time, so that means um, for every second it's going to fully use one second time. And the interrupt speed, we're going to actually expose this as a, a variable, that we can change this in the game level. So we're going to right click, promote to variable, and we're going to call this turret rot or rotation speed. Um, so this allows us to change the rotation of the turret we want it to track the player very quickly and make it really hard to dodge, or is it kind of a slow and stupid turret? Uh, that's up to you, and you can change that in the, the game viewport, and you don't have to always come back in the game. And it'll, it'll make it so that for every turret you place in the game world, you can change it based on every turret, so that they're not all exact. Um, so for this, we're going to do a 0 .05, and that's going to be the base tracking speed of our turret rotation speed. Right, so we're going to compile and save that and now from here we are going to drag off of the gate exit pull all the way over here we are going to set world rotation now we want to set the world rotation of the barrel head i'm going to go ahead and use that um, you could also just pull off from over here and put that in there but uh for organizational purposes i will make another instance of this right here and then the new rotation for it is going to be what's on our tick uh, the new following rotation All right so from there we can compile and save that and let's go back to our map and I'm going to delete this instance of my turret and we're gonna drag in our new one so for me it's turret 2bp for you it should be just the first one uh, you might split up a little bit now we're going to play. When I enter, so it's on the wrong side, and this is why um, we had the arrow in there. So it looks like it was on the, the left side of the square. So let's go back to the viewport in our turret. I forgot to draw this arrow. So if we go, we highlight our arrow and we go to the rendering, just like for the collision. We'll do the hidden in game and uncheck that. That way we can see the direction of going um but we need the barrel to actually be rotated and on this left 
plane over here on the square. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. Fit over and that. That's be about right. We'll compile and save that. Now if we go back to play, this should be facing us properly. Oh, there we go. And see how it's interpolating to my position. So it's not instantly on me at all times. It's not shooting directly at me as I'm moving. It's kind of trailing behind. So that's pretty good. But let's exit that. And now if we go into the world map, you can see we have this selected. We should be able to modify why is oh sorry go back into it we need to uh turret rot speed here in our variables let's uh expose this variable here we'll compile and now inside the game world we have access to how quickly it tracks the player so right now it's at 0 0.05 if we make it 0.1 it should be much quicker save that go in there we go, it tracks me a bit faster, twice as fast as it was tracking me before. So that's pretty cool. Now we know it's facing us. All right, so let's go back into our blueprint and we got one more thing to do. We want it to fire projectiles, right? So we're gonna go into our event graph and we're gonna actually make a new function. We're gonna call this function spawn projectile. Cool. So now we're inside of that. And inside of our spawn projectile, we're going to have a little a timer. We're going to need two new variables inside of here. One is going to be called the fire delay. So that needs to be a float. That, and then we need one more, which is going to be the game time fire. Now, th this is going to be a bit confusing at first. You're kind of like, why do we need two floats? It's already a float. Why do we need two different variables for a timer? Uh, I'll explain it when we set it up. So let's um, go ahead and drag off our spawn projectile, and we're going to add in a branch, which is essentially our if statement. Um, our con condition is going to be a greater than, and it's going to be a float greater than float. Now, what we're going to compare is... At your top one is going to be get game time in seconds. So this is literally getting how many seconds the game has been playing for. So when you hit the play button, uh, how many seconds has passed by. So this will continue counting as long as the game is playing. It'll always start from zero though. And then we're going to use the game time fire. And we're going to drop that into the compared, um, the compared Boolean here. And so this is going to start off at zero. We're not going to change this, so we'll compile it, and it's automatically set to zero, and that's going to stay at zero, and you'll see why in a second. Um, off of our true from the branch, we want to set game time fire. What we're going to set it to is we're going to drag off of this and add a float plus float. And we're going to get our game time seconds pull that a little bit easier to read we're going to get the current game time seconds and what we're going to add to it is the fire delay and now the fire delay is what is actually going to be the countdown of how frequent the turret fires so this one we're going to expose so let's go to our variables menu over here and we're going to expose this we're going to compile this and right now it's set to zero. So what this is going to do is it's going to constantly tick for every frame. It's going to fire a projectile if we leave it at this. Because um, what we're getting, what we're doing here is we're comparing if the game time in seconds is larger than the game time fire. So as soon as you start the game, this is a true statement. So it's going to fire from the beginning of the game because this is, this is equal to zero. But then what we're doing is as soon as it fires, as soon as this is true, we're going to set game time fire to the current game time value in seconds. So let's say it's three seconds in, it's gonna be three seconds plus our fire delay, which we're going to make two for now. So it's going to then be at five seconds. So once the game time hits five seconds, 
this will be true again and it will be able to fire. And then it's gonna do the whole cycle over again. So now it's gonna take the value of five seconds, add another two seconds to it, and then this is gonna be true and it's gonna fire again. But now it's gonna be at seven seconds, so it won't fire again until this is true and it's seven seconds. Then we're gonna add another two seconds and so on and so forth. It's always just gonna keep adding two seconds to the game time and firing every two seconds. So if this is a smaller number, so if we make it one second, it'll fire every one second. A bigger number, it's gonna fire every two, three, four seconds, so it's gonna be a longer delay. All right, so then from there, we haven't done anything yet, so it's not gonna fire anything. But we're gonna do a spawn actor from class. And we haven't set up a projectile, but if you're in the first person template like I am, you are just gonna search projectile and we're gonna use the first person projectile. So this is an already made default projectile. You can make your own if you want. Um, you have to make a blueprint and then add a projectile component to it. I'm not going over that in this tutorial. Okay, and now from here we need one more thing is we need our projectile spawn. Um, what I forgot to do is to rename this arrow component to our projectile spawn point. We'll just call it projectile spawn. And we're going to drag this in there. We are getting get world transform. We're basically just getting its location in the world, where it is, which we know is always following the end of the barrel because we have it set up to follow this barrel, right? It's a child of. And then we're just gonna use that. So no matter where it is, it's getting that forward vector or that world transform and it, the, the arrow, the direction that it's pointing and it's spawning the projectile at that location. And that's it, that's all we need there. So we can compile this, save it. And now we should go back to the event graph and we need to drag in this function right here at the end of our set world rotation. We're just gonna plug this in. So what this is doing is when this gate is open on tick, while it's open, it's just gonna use a tick. It's gonna constantly update, update our barrels rotation to follow us. And every two seconds, it's gonna spawn a projectile. File, save, we'll play this. And when I enter, oh, oop, here we go, look at that. So it's following us and it's firing at us, bouncing off my objects, but I left the collision so it doesn't move anymore. Now when I re-enter it, it fires, and it'll hit me and it keeps tracking. Now and it's actually spawning there. So that's it. Pretty easy blueprint and it's very effective. This is really cool to use, simple to use in any game you want, something tracking the player. Um, this is the easiest way to do it without using behavior trees if you're not using AI. So awesome. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Don't forget to like and follow my channel and I will continue making tutorials for you. All right, so have fun. Later, guys.